Well, hi guys, this is Darren with My RV Works. I fully expect this to be a short furnace video because I've got so many other furnace videos. Uh, if you need to go see those, we've got a playlist. We'll make a link to that playlist. There's dozens of furnace videos. But I wanted to show you something on this one. The customer's got a brand new furnace, brand new RV, and it's not working correctly for them. And I want to show you what I'm doing to diagnose this and what we're going to do to fix it. Okay, so let's turn you around here and show you what's going on with this thing. We've got some tight quarters in here. Uh, this will happen on any furnace, but you can get the model number there. It's a, what, a, a DF for Dometic Furnace, LD40111. But don't get hung up on that part number or anything. Um, so just a quick tour. What I've done is I've got my piercing probes. I've pierced into the two blue wires. On this particular furnace, there are two blue wires. This is where they come in from the RV. I've got red, which is plus, black, which is minus, and the two blues. The two blues leave the furnace, go up to the thermostat, um, depending on if you have a Coleman or a Dometic, on how they're wired, but it's that wall thermostat or the board up in the air conditioner that's sending the contact closure to come back down here. So one blue wire is gonna be 12 plus. Where's my finger? Right there. One blue wire is gonna be 12 plus. The other one is, is gonna be wetted, and when it gets contact closure up in the air conditioner or thermostat, it's gonna come back down on the other side. Now down here, um, you'll notice that I've got my my meter pinned to this leftmost blue wire. That is the leftmost blue wire because he's the one that comes from over in there. You could just wiggle your wires and find out, but on this particular furnace up in there, he's the high limit thermostat, and he also daisy chains himself through the sail switch. And if you wiggle your wires around, you'll find out which one of the wires you want. But what you want is you want to take your meter and you're going to be looking for 12 volts on the wire that is giving the all clear signal that it's okay to open the gas valve. Okay. And so here I've got my meter I'm grounded to the case frame and I've got my meter connected to the blue wire that made the path up to the thermostat, back down to the thermostat on, on the two wires up here. One's gonna be 12 plus all the time. The other one's gonna be coming back from the thermostat. And when it comes back from the thermostat, it's gonna make two stops. The first stop it's gonna make, and they might wire them backwards, is gonna be on that high limit thermostat right there. And then it's gonna go through your sail switch, and then it's gonna come right into the board. And that is how the board knows that those are good, okay? Now, these are piercing into those wires and I'm gonna become the thermostat and we're gonna start this up. Bear with me, there we go, touching. Let me, let me get in there, hold on. You're gonna wiggle a little bit. Okay, so I just use piercing probes and I just you know pierce into the uh, deal. Therefore, I'm the thermostat. Now my meter, is set to 12 volts DC and I have no voltage. Therefore, I have no voltage coming in on this wire and we already have a blinking red light. That's what I wanted to show you. Um, what does that mean? I mean, this happened right away. Uh, let me try to open my wires here. Okay, so now the thermostat has stopped calling for heat. Because remember, these two blue wires, they go up inside the thermostat, the control board up in the air conditioner or whatever, they're just basically making contact closure. So when I pierce into them, and I touch these two wires together, I'm basically in the thermostat. I like doing that for troubleshooting because then I can determine is a problem upstream in the air conditioner or is it downstream on the furnace, okay? I don't have a lot of room here. See, this is what I'm working in. I got a wall here and I've got the furnace there, so I don't have a lot of room, so bear with me if it's kind of confining. Customer states that sometimes the furnace will work fine and then sometimes the fan will come on but there's no ignition. Um, so again, it's cold, furnace will ignite, and then it reaches temperature, the furnace turns off, everybody's good, but then the furnace fan will come on when it, there's a call for heat again, and um, but the furnace won't ignite. The fan will come on and then the fan will turn off. Now, if that were to happen, and you have this style of furnace, I would want you to come out and see if the light's blinking. Okay, if you have a meter, um, I like to use these little probes here. Wiggle your wires, but on this board, it's gonna be this leftmost pin, and I'm just probed in there. Meter, voltage DC, okay? And the fan is in post-purge, 
In other words, he's he's thinking he's done. I might take two hands and I'm basically going to wedge this pin into there. So let me hold on for a second. Let me get this. If I get it with my hand, let's see here. And uh, there we go. Okay, he's wedged in there. You can see how he's touching. Now let's watch for that blink. Oh wait, hey, you know what? This time I do have 12 volts, and there our furnace started. Okay, so I got it this time, and that explains the intermittency of this. So I'm gonna take the furnace away. I just broke my two wires, and that made it go away. Let's try to make it come back again. I'm just gonna pull these two together. And I'm gonna look at my meter. Okay, it, it, I got 12 volts on that wire, so that means it's, and I just broke my wires apart. So that means it's going to work just fine. I'm gonna let the furnace post purge itself off. But you remember when we saw this light blinking? That was bef that was before it even tried to tried to ignite, and that's what I want to show you because it's doing it pretty regularly now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this furnace post purge itself out. It's about 90 seconds. It's like 89 seconds actually, and then I'm going to let the uh, furnace start from a dead start. We're going to reconnect these wires up here, and then we're going to see if I get 12 volts over here. If I do, then it's going to work just fine because the sail switch is behaving itself. But on several instances since I've been out here, it hasn't been behaving itself, and that's what I want to show you. What electrically this will look like if it's failing. Okay, so I'm going to just pause, let the furnace cool itself off. Furnace has turned itself off. I'm going to try to... I'm, my eyeballs are looking up here where my fingers are, but I want you to watch that um, meter. I'm just going to touch them together and hold them. Here we go. I got 11 volts. Okay, we're going to stop. Hit the power switch. Let it come to a complete stop. Let's see. I got 11 volts. Okay. Sooner or later, if we keep doing this enough, we will not have that 11 volts. Okay. And I got it again. I want you to do this test if your furnace is intermittent. I got it again. So sooner or later, by monitoring the voltage on this farthest pin, the one that comes from the high limit thermostat and the sail switch, your meter will show zero. And it'll also, the blink light here. And you saw that in, early in the video, but I wanted to kind of ramble on a little bit more. But when you see that, that's a sail switch problem right there. You're gonna get one blink, and on here you're gonna say one blink is airflow limit fault. We don't know if it's the limit switch or the Airflow, airflow would be cell switch, limit fault would be the, the high limit thermostat over here. The way you would determine which one that is, verify you have power on both sides of your cell switch here, and then verify you have power on both sides of your limit switch, high limit thermostat, or high limit, uh, high temperature limit switch right there. And sooner or later you'll find the, the, the broken trail, okay? Well, like I said, this was going to be a very short video, and I hope that uh, by just showing you that little bit right there, it is an intermittent problem, but I was able to find it a couple times. Um, it was doing it pretty regularly before I started this video, so I figured it would behave for us by being broken more often. But it's actually working, but that falls in with what the customer's experience has been as well. It works fine for weeks and weeks, and then all of a sudden it won't. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be replacing that sail switch. Uh, when you replace the sales switch, you give them the model number and the serial number because the model number is going to pretty much be standard for years and years, but the serial number will change. Um, the medic has an issue with these sales switches. If you were to ask them honestly, they might tell you they have an issue with their sales switches. Um, I'm not calling them out on anything like that, but from my experience in the field, there we've gone through a lot of sales switches on brand new furnaces. Um, so don't be surprised. And it's it's like a $20 part. It's not a major expense. But, and, and if you can get to the front of your furnace, it's just two screws. If you do replace your sail switch, make sure that you replace the plastic housing that comes with a sail switch as well. It'll come in a big white box with foam wrapped around it. So you want to replace the whole assembly, the, the plastic, the, the sail switch, and everything. And so that's what we're going to do here for this customer and hopefully get them working again. Okay, so if this was value, give us a thumbs up. Enjoy it. And uh, share it with your friends. Happy Camper St. Mary Work. So hope you enjoyed the short video. From Port Orchard, Washington, this is Darren signing off. Thank <laughs> you.